Good morning, everyone, and welcome today to uh, Berlin Buzzwords. So my name is Atita Arora, and I work with Open Source Connections. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about understanding Vespa with the Lucene mindset. So the talk is going to be centered around understanding Vespa. I know it's kind of a little uh, repetitive after two sessions from uh, Vespa folks yesterday, but with me. And uh, I am... Uh, kind of on a little time crunch because I have 20 minutes session. So which is why I would be sticking to uh, this agenda for today where I would be introducing myself, my company, Vespa. Uh, we would try to understand Vespa in a little better way. We would be covering uh, some distinctions. How do you get started if you want to? How do you create and deploy Vespa applications? How do you feed data to it? And how do you interact with uh, it? I would also be leaving you with some references you could consult in future. So without further ado, let's get started. Yeah, in good times, I look good. Uh, I work in um, search domain, and I've been working here since uh, 2008. I mean, the search domain. I am open source enthusiastic, and I have worked on several open source projects, contributed to them. I am uh, primarily interested in uh, the search relevance and uh, language analysis. That really kicks me. I'm uh, also a polyglot uh, developer, and uh, I've done my master's in computer applications. And um, just to kick things a little bit more, I did my master's in strategic business management as well. Personally, I'm mother of two boys, and I love to travel, and I love to cook. So that's about my company, Open Source Connections. As the name suggests itself, we are also open source enthusiastics, and we are on a mission to empower the world's search teams. And uh, we have um, lots of um, conferences, and we hold uh, relevance trainings as well. Also, we have a lot of books, blogs, check out the website, and um, we're hiring. <laughs> so moving on, what is Vespa? So there's going to be this little guy who's going to be helping me understanding what Vespa is. Let's hear him. What's that? Oh, it's just the greatest thing that humans ever made. The Vespa. Okay, that's much of a hype and sorry. We get it. It's the greatest thing that humans ever made, for sure. But that's not the Vespa that I'm going to be talking about today. I'm going to be talking about Vespa the search engine. And let's try to understand what Vespa the search engine is. So it's the platform which provides you the low latency uh, data ingestion and information retrieval. It actually does the fast and the real-time writes. It supports the true partial updates. And uh, you can search on structured, unstructured data with it. Along with that, it uh, has the integration for query time, the complex operations aggregation, and real-time analytics. Uh, you can also uh, use the NLP features and uh, complex machine learning models along with it. And the support for TensorFlow, et cetera, is provided out of the, out of the box. Um, on top of it, it also provides you with managed and auto-recovering clusters. And I'm sure this must be very exciting. Um, I would also be trying to create a little bit of a distinction to create uh, the picture for you as to where Vespa stands. So. When Solar came in, it was a dress for uh, the enterprise search market. Uh, the cool thing about it was that it could ingest, and uh, you could also interact with the data in various formats. It provides this uh, nice admin uh, UI console with uh, which you could also query and also get the cluster information. Uh, when Elasticsearch came in, it was more analysis-driven. It was um, more focused towards the logging, monitoring, and scaling use cases. Uh, it also provides the rich APIs for almost everything and anything um, in um, your uh, search cluster. Let's see what Vespa stands here. So Vespa actually fits into all kind of use cases. Uh, it's uh, basically... Uh, the, the aggregated focus is on the large-scale data ingestion and uh, information retrieval from it. It uh, 
I think the distinct thing about it is that uh, all the uh, complex stuff that you usually would do um, outside for the Lucene-based search engines are provided out of the box uh, by Vespa. So you can do all sort of complex information retrieval and integrate and use the machine learning models um, in Vespa by default. So that's kind of a cool thing. So. I know this is also kind of repetitive. <laughs> there was a session yesterday where they talked about this architecture. I'm not going to be spending a lot of time, again, time crunch. So we have this ad application package, which uh, like in our solar application, we have uh, schema and we have solar uh, config XML and other um, configuration XMLs. That's where the application package stands and that's where you integrate and put all your machine learning models and the other components, could be custom components as well, that goes into the config cluster, which is apparently using also Zookeeper. Then you have the stateless Java container, which, is, uh, which comprises of the query processor and all the custom um, components that you're going to be um, putting into Vespa. And the content cluster, I think that's an interesting part because this part is implemented in C++. And I think from the uh, aspect of a developer, I feel this is probably one of the reasons that Vespa is so magical and so fast, I would say, because uh, for the Lucene-based search engines, uh, this, t uh, this stuff is done in uh, Java, which means it has to be converted into machine learning, uh, machine uh, understandable format. And when this stuff is already in C++, it means that it's kind of closer to the machine, which is probably one of the reasons it's that fast. So, Obviously, by now, you must be wondering, how do I get started? So as per the documentation for various uh, tutorials or um, test use cases that uh, Vespa documentation has, they talk about keeping six gigs dedicated to Docker. I would say I've tried a pretty small case. Go for 10 gigs. That's kind of safer. Keep your port 8080 free and brew and w get um, available. Along with that, you would need Python 3 in case um, you're using Python, because uh, your data set needs to be converted into Vespa-friendly format, and that's not the usual uh, JSON. It's a slightly distinct uh, JSON. I would be talking about it in my forthcoming slides. So how do you create Vespa application? Um, just like any other usual uh, Lucene-based search engine application, you have a schema, you have uh, other configuration for the cluster and stuff. Similarly, and also Lucene-based search engines now also provide these schema guessing capabilities, although they are not production ready per se. But uh, considering it's a big data search engine and uh, you're going to be ingesting and interacting with huge amount of data, uh, I think which is why Vespa guys say that you spend some time on your schema so that you can avoid this goof up. So you need to have your schema uh, .sd, uh, which is going to be the schema of your entire application. You have services XML, which probably looks like, I think I've provided a snapshot, but it's too small, even for this uh, screen. So that's where the um, uh, kind of request handler configuration goes in. The host XML is needed only when you have a multi-node uh, cluster set up, and validation XML is more like a circuit breaker, so that in case you change some property and which might corrupt your production instance, you can have a protection against it. So in uh, structure, it would look something like this. Um, once you have all of this set up, you would need to deploy your application. So you can run the first command. I know I've got a little bit into the details, and if you're using Apple M1 like me, you might use the second one. Then you go into the directory of your application, and then you just hit Vespa deploy, and bam, your application is deployed. So the next big task is how do I feed data to uh, Vespa? So as I talked about it before, Vespa supports uh, its own um, Vespa-friendly JSON format. I've also provided a link to the Python script, which I have used because I was using the nearest neighbor uh, um, example, and uh, which is why you could use the same script or you can modify this as per your scheme or your use case. Uh, this is, uh, again, it's kind of a little blur, but if you look at the ID, that's where the entire changes are, that the ID needs to be slightly different, and I've try to also break it down for you that ID is like you need to define a namespace and then your schema name, and then comes the innocent ID, which works universally. So this is probably one of the parts that needs to be uh, tuned or changed. 
there's no native support for the dates. So it needs to be converted to long if you have any uh, data date related operations. And I actually uh, transform them to strings just to keep it mess free and simple for myself. Uh, the bulk data is also supported, but uh, it's supported through the Vespa feed client, uh, which again, you can brew. Um, another uh, kind of uh, critical part is defining your ranking function. I mean, I still have to scratch my head to get this thing right. And after all of this has been done, and if you bypass all of this, you can post your uh, single document JSON as Vespa document and the JSON uh, path. Or if you're using Vespa feed client, you can hit the Vespa feed client with the file name and the endpoint where your application is um, running. So now we have the configuration, we have the application running, and we have the data available also in uh, the Vespa. So you might as well need to modify or remove something. You can obviously, by now, you must have understood that uh, ID is kind of the key component here. So you would be interacting with the documents uh, with this ID. So Vespa document, obviously, in case if you remove or modify or update, you need to use this ID in case of removing, you just remove the ID. And in case you need to modify, you would give the, um, the new document JSON. So, this thing, the, the next thing that falls into the um, picture is how do you query, how do you interact with this data? So Vespa uses uh, a distinct format, which is not too distinct, actually. Uh, it's called Yahoo Query Language, which looks a lot similar to SQL, which I'm sure everyone here understands. So I would recommend you to use a command line. It kind of works best. But this is the query builder. I don't know why this side of the screen is like a little blurry, but OK. I was trying to show that you have a lot of tuning knobs. Don't get confused with this. Uh, this is available at uh, where the ap application is running, uh, slash query builder. The defal default query type is like AND, or the uh, all terms to match, like a match all in Elasticsearch. Uh, but you have uh, the provision to change it by providing type equals to all, any, weak end, uh, tokenize, web, or phrase. So moving on, I've tried to also uh, capture uh, some intents that you may have when you're querying with the data. So like in case you want to kind of query all the documents, like a normal star dot star or um, query all feature from um, the Lucene based search engines, you can do that also with the Vespa at select star where true. If you need to do the filtering, you need to provide it in a SQL format where the field contains your designated query. Uh, in case if you want to query all the fields, then in that case you do not specify the query. Uh, you do not specify the field, but you query as a default. So that would query all the fields. In case if you want to uh, render a specific number of documents, you use the feature of hits. Hits is the number of documents you're going to be rendering. Uh, if you need to change the default order of your um, uh, documents or the results, then you can modify that by introducing order by clause. And you can define your, or you can specify your field on which you would like to order your results on. If you need to filter certain keywords um, in your search uh, results, like uh, I've tried to provide an example. And I also say that query Berlin, but you remove uh, the documents which have title 1987 in them. And you can also specify the custom ranking, uh, the ranking function that I spoke about in my previous slide. So that's that. Uh, one of the good things is that you could also use it for personalization. Like you capture um, user profile, and you can use this um, along with your query, and you can provide this as a user profile setting. So like the person um, or the intent is the love songs or something from 80s, you can provide that and add this into the query context. So moving on, I think by now you guys must be wondering, Vespa is about vector search. Where is vector search? How do I do vector search? So I'm not sure how many people were really here when they discussed about that. Uh, for vector search to work, you need to um, ingest uh, vector embeddings into um, your um, data set. 
So you can generate this uh, using the SBIRT. I think that's kind of a little traditional. We have seen that yesterday. Um, I've attached also the snippet of the code, which can help you uh, generate these embeddings, and then you can push them into um, Vespa. And then you can also, in case if you want to query uh, the vector, you can use the snippet, and you can uh, create the embedding of your query. And then you can, so because I was using uh, CLI, um, the command line, which is why I set the export, uh, the, the query value as um, this uh, embedding that I generated from this um, code above. And then I put, instead of the input query as the normal text query, I put this as the vector query. And that's how you use uh, for the vector search. So I think all in all, it looks Pretty nice, of course, but uh, I think there are still some pain points that, uh, as I said, the embedding needs to be generated explicitly for the data set and also for the querying to leverage the capabilities of any search engine. I'm not talking particularly about Vespa here. I'm talking about any Lucene-based uh, search engine as well. Uh, I think that's kind of something that, that we still need to kind of iron out. Um, I had a little tough time understanding if it's better than Lucene or not, because it's a pretty recent addition to Lucene. So I think time will tell. Also, the quality of these results that we get, because usually the similarity search for which the vector search was introduced is done on the attribute uh, basis. Like you use uh, different attributes of a document to understand if two documents are similar. And as per the new approach of vector search, we are going to be using uh, vectors. So the quality of these results needs to be proved in, uh, if they are efficient, if they are uh, worth going forward with. And I think one, another thing that probably is not mentioned on the slides, but that kind of puzzles me is if there are any use cases that need only vector search, like they, that can only be resolved with vector search. I mean. I am still kind of, you know, like researching about it. Might as well come up with something more next year. Apart from that, I think I've tried to provide examples, and I just hate that this is kind of a little blurry. But uh, yeah, you can see that there are a lot of tuning knobs, a uh, lot of possibilities with the query builder as well, while I've also tried to provide an example, like when I've uh, used the command line uh, for querying Vespa. I mean, all in all, it works pretty neatly. There are some references, as I promised, and I cannot recommend them enough on their Slack channel. They're very responsive, very nice folks. They never get bugged. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and you can check out the documentation. I think documentation-wise, it needs a little bit more work, but it's cool. I think that's about it for my talk today. Thank you, and if you have any questions for me. Thank you, Atita. Wonderful talk. So now we still have some time for questions. Um, are there any questions in the audience? Yeah, we have a question. Just a second, I'm bringing the mic. <laughs> Hi, uh, thank Hi. you for the great talk. Um, on one slide, you mentioned that uh, Vespa supports partial updates yes. uh, natively. Yeah. So are there some constraints about that, like in Lucene, when you did to meet certain uh, yeah, field think, configurations to support the partial updates? Uh, not really. As far as I know, partial updates are supported. Why? Because I think if you talk about partial updates from Lucene, the document is usually deleted and a new document is introduced. But Vespa uses a single uh, segment. I think that's kind of neat, and I think this probably is not covered on my slides because... It's a, it's a huge topic. I think one of the other neat things about Vespa is that you do not need to configure any shards because everything is one segment. And as we know from um, our uh, very fundamental search aspects that if it's one segment, it ought to be very fast. I think that's something that we also try to achieve with the Lucene-based search engines using merge policies and et cetera. So uh, the partial updates are in place, and um, that's what I was trying to uh, highlight here. That they're supported, yes. So when you need to want um, uh, want to update a, a specific field in the document, you yeah. still need to pass the whole document, or is is it really 
possible to, to update one specific field. Yes, you can do one okay. specific uh, field. That's great. Yes, yes. All right, thanks for the question. So um, the time for this talk is up, but um, of course, if you have further question, you can um, meet Atita offline and discuss about Vespa. So let's thank Atita one more time. Thank you. Great audience. <laughs>